Hey, what's up, nerds? I am your host, Smokey Balloons, and this is King of the Hill. This is game number one between Ryan Zhu and the Dark Affliction. Ryan Zhu with 344 wins, 200 losses, and the Dark Affliction with 1,131 wins, 406 losses. So very, very impressive uh, win to loss ratio by the Dark Affliction. His name's pretty long. I'm gonna call him um, probably just Dark or either Dark or Dark Affliction. Uh, King of the Hill, Knights vs Challenger. The Knight is Ryan Zhu. The Challenger is the Dark Affliction. And the first map is on cards. So, the Dark Affliction looks like he has quite an angry Asian, maybe sumo wrestler. Uh, with very nasty fangs as his picture. So maybe he's an angry guy. The Dark Affliction starting off with a bomb tower on the right hand side and Ryan Zhu starting off with a boomer on the left hand side. Now, um, King of the Hill has just changed their rule. They've just made the change. Now ice stalling is no longer allowed. I repeat, ice stalling is no longer allowed. So basically Ryan felt like uh, his ice stall strategy was a bit too overpowered and that he really felt like, I think he was really, really confident that if he did it perfectly, there was no way he could lose any lives on essentially every map except for Hydra Dam. And so because of this, um, oh, did I just see a blue moon go through? Okay, never mind. That was just a problem with the graphics. Usually you don't see people leak balloons this early on, uh, especially with this bomb tower and boomerang combination. But, um, yeah, now ice stalling is no longer allowed because oh, no, never mind. The Dark Affliction did lose two lives. He just lost two lives somehow. Um, I didn't see how that happened, but uh, well, I don't know. Now he's down two lives. Uh, so now round four, both of them getting their boomers up for in case they, they do a pink rush. They do both do a pink rush versus each other. I think both sides lose lives. Uh, Ryan definitely loses four lives. Loses six lives. Um, so now the Dark Affliction is in the lead. Um, <clears throat> so basically the rationale between before uh, banning ice stalling was that uh, if you saw those games versus the Prime on 9 and Cerulean, it looked like there was basically no way, like it would have been very very difficult for these guys to do uh, any strategies that could counteract the ice stall. It was just too too easy to go no lives lost. And so for that reason, uh, Ryan Zhu banned ice stalling. It, it really made his opponent like really really mad. <laughs> and he doesn't really want to make his opponents really mad because he wants people of course to take part in King of the Hill. And a lot of people were getting mad at the fact that ice stalling was allowed and they didn't want to take part if ice stalling was still allowed. So therefore, uh, Ryan took ice stalling out of the game. And this means that you'll see a lot more action-packed games. It probably means that in maps like this, which are much smaller, going no lives lost is not that important because it should be quite possible to kill your opponent before round 38. Uh, here, Ryan is going for Black Rush. Uh, can it hurt the Dark Affliction? It looks like some balloons are definitely getting through. Uh, meanwhile, the Dark Affliction is also going for a Black Rush versus Ryan. Um, and it seems that we keep seeing... Oh, there's, oh Ryan's is losing a lot of lives. Oh, he, he should have set his Boomer on last. I don't know why he's sitting on first. Um, now he's getting a second Boomer. I think you usually do need a second Boomerang to help with those Blacks. But holy cow, Ryan is down so many lives. He's down to only 47 lives now, so he is getting his Mortar up ASAP because he does not want to lose any more lives. Maybe a, a quick... Rigo Yellow Rush might end it right here. Uh, but no, I think Ryan has a mortar up to enough of a defense that a quick red Yellow Rush shouldn't be able to hurt Ryan. But man, I keep seeing balloons go through on the Dark Affliction side, but he doesn't lose lives. So that's probably a, a problem with the graphics. So here's a big Yellow Rush, uh, and it does c cause some balloons to get through. Ryan down to, down to only 32 lives, 28 lives. Wow. The Dark Affliction is so, so far ahead. Um, he just has to do a, one more big rush, I think, and he'll kill Ryan off. And I think, with his, his experience, he should be able to finish this game off uh, very comfortably. Uh, these blacks might even get through and get Ryan to lose even more lives. I think I see some more balloons going through. 24 lives, 22, 21, 20 lives. Damn. Um, I think Dark Fisher should just go for a big rainbow rush and finish off the game here. Because it's going to be very, very hard to defend... I remember I should save those last 20 lives. 
Um, no, he's going for a pink uh, camera rush instead to try to finish those lives off. But usually Ryan has his mortars in a good enough spot that he can handle these uh, camera pinks. Uh, the Dark Vision, meanwhile, is getting up his defense for the Regrow Rainbow Rush. Um, he's sending some more camo pinks. So, I'm a bit surprised by this attack, because he, he, he should have seen that Ryan did not lose lives to camo pinks in the previous round. Now, oh man, down to 20 lives. Uh, round 14. So, it looks like right, neither side is sending a Rainbow Rush. It looks like both sides feel like they are um, very good at de defending with Rainbow Rushes, which they probably are. But I still feel like with only 20 lives left, uh, the Dark Fisher. Oh! So Ryan is going for a Ceramic and Rainbow Rush! Uh, and Dark Fisher quickly sells his bomb tag to get 40. But tons of Ceramics getting through! This might be it for the Dark Fisher. Um, and that's GG! Ryan with an amazing comeback on round 15. The Ceramic and Rainbow Rush gets a Dark Affliction. He tried to uh, wreck fast and get that 4 2 bomb tower up, but uh, he just couldn't get it there in time. And. Uh, he just wasn't very prepared for that round 15 uh, ceramic rush, I felt. Uh, I, I don't think his two ricochets, one boomer and a bomb tower was enough. So it, it was the right decision to sell everything and get a 4-2 bomb tower. But, uh, you know, when you upgrade towers, there's a slight lag and that slight delay before those towers start firing. And so that was a, a great rush by Ryan and just not quite the, the fast enough response by the Dark Affliction. And Ryan, with a comeback miracle, I think, in game number uh, one, here, taking the first win. Let's go to game two. We're here in game number two. The Dark Affliction has chosen Temple as a second map. So another very small map. Uh, Temple is very, very similar to cards in many, many ways. Um, one of the greatest, one of the best ways to measure how similar or different tracks are from each other is just to find the length of the track. And I think the length of the track uh, for Temple and cards are very, very similar. So that makes them very, very similar maps. Because uh, the length of the track is the most important in deducing uh, how much sort of time you have between rounds as well as um, how much time you have to pop the balloons. So let's see if the Dark Affliction can show some cool strategies on this map uh, as because he's chosen he should think he has a, quite a strong advantage on this map. Uh, and now what strategies are both these players going to go for? <clears throat> both of them not putting down any towers yet. This could mean that they're, they're going for a farm strategy and Ryan and Zoo going for a farm and the Dark Affliction also going for a farm. Uh, although in the two opposite corners of the map. So both of them going for what looks like identical strategies so far. The bomb, uh, sorry not the bomb, the, fa the farm and the boomerang. And both of them getting the farm up to a quick 1-0 upgrade. So very very interesting that both these guys think that uh, farms are the best strategy for temple. And um, now that ice stalling is out of the game, um, it might be that farm strategies are coming back with a resurgence. Now both of them have their bomb, tower, bomb towers up, so they're both going boomerang bomb tower with the farm economy. Uh, both of them not sending any balloons for economy, just relying solely on farm economy. Uh, now slight difference here, the Dark Affliction has this boomer up to a 2-0, whereas Ryan is keeping his on a 1-0. Uh, not a big difference, but uh, uh, basically because they're not sending any balloons, then the economy is exactly, exactly identical. Uh, you can see who's ahead or behind the economy by um, how fast they get their farms, but basically we're both having farm economy, they have the exact same uh, economy. Oh, no, oh, these pinks might get through. Um, would that pink get through? Um, it looks like these balloons are getting through, so it seems like there's, a, there's definitely a bit of a lag on uh, either Ryan's side or the D Dark Affliction side, where we often see balloons getting through, but really in reality they're not. Trust me guys, they're not getting through. Um, it's just the lag uh, showing uh, a difference with the visuals. So both of them getting their second farm down now. They're doing, oh my god, look how, look how identical their, their strategies are. They're upgrading farms like exactly the same time. They're getting their second farm at exactly the same time. So it seems like maybe these guys might have uh, practiced together before or something. They might have prayed together before. Or maybe they just both think that this is the absolute best strategy on Temple. And it may very well, well, well be the case. Uh, Dark Vision are hit by one life. But uh, I'm not too sure how much these, this matters for a small map like Temple. And especially with farms, it usually means that neither player has a ground zero. So, uh, they've already shown a monkey and a bomb, and their third tower pretty much has to be a mortar or village for camera detection, otherwise they just have no camera detection, which is 
you know, obviously ridiculous. So, uh, Ryan is seeing a quick Black Rush here, trying to get some lives down from the Dark Affliction. So that's a very different uh, approach from Ryan. He still will send balloons sometimes just to get the lives down, whereas he seems that the Dark Affliction is more focused on economy. And uh, it seems like this attack is not doing any damage to Dark Affliction at all, uh, losing absolutely no lives, even though we see some balloons go through. Uh, Dark Affliction going up to five farms already, five one zero farms. And whereas, meanwhile, uh, Ryan's are getting a second boomer just to be a bit safer. And now Ryan is getting his mortar up. And a uh, very interesting mortar position, putting it on the little uh, corner here. It should be able to hit both the top row, as well as uh, most of this bend. So it's quite a good mortar position, because you can see there, when you put it on 2-2 uh, two, two or 2-3, two, the bomb is big enough that it can actually hit the, the whole top row. And although that doesn't influence the camo balloons that the opponent sends very much, but it does influence, uh, like for example, round 21, or some later rounds where there's natural camo balloons that can hit quite a lot of that uh, natural track. You can see there, uh, all those greens turning into blues. And Ryan obviously has the 2 2 because you can see the fire coming out of the balloons after they're being hit. Now, the Dark Affliction going for a village, uh, whereas Ryan is going for the mortar. So, another difference here between the two players. I think the village is better on this map because usually one mortar can't cover all the track. You usually need two mortars to make sure you're, you're completely safe. But at the same time, one mortar can keep you safe for quite a while. Um, you certainly can't kill somebody with a huge camo pink rush, uh, especially on round 13, 14, 15. That one mortar can keep you reasonably safe. Uh, but if you do a gigantic, a gigantic rush, a gigantic pink, pink uh, camo rush, then usually you do need a second mortar to stop against that. Now both these guys getting ready to defend against a Rewe Ranga rush. Now both these guys have farms, and therefore they can do the... Oh, I just saw uh, some camos get through. Yeah, so uh, Ryan sent some camo pinks, but the Dark Affliction upgraded his uh, village a little bit too late there. Oh, so Ryan is selling one of his farms. He's uh, sending a Rainbow Rush. Can the Dark Affliction defend against this? So the Dark Affliction is selling all of his farms, getting a turbo charge, and he's got the two ricochets. And, uh... Well, what's so uh, Dark Vision down to 61 lives. Now, very, very interesting that Ryan did not go all the way with that rush. The Dark Vision says two four boomers are glitched. The fuck? Um, that's true. Basically, sometimes when you get the turbo charge boomerang, sometimes they glitch up and they actually like jam up, and it doesn't work at all. So you have to be careful with using the two four boomerang to uh, stop some rushes because they they can they can can glitch up. So that one, I think that was, that was a fantastic, fantastic play by Ryan. Look, look how much he's in the lead now. He's basically just sold one farm. He actually did a fake rush. I think that was a fake rush, a fake rainbow rush. He, his rainbow rush wasn't that big, and it caused the Dark Affliction to sell all, almost all of his farms uh, to get like a huge defense up versus the supposed rush that was coming. But actually, the rush wasn't re uh, really coming. He only sent one farm. He didn't sell the other farms. And so now Ryan has more farm economy. He has. Maybe a little bit less defense, but the, the farm economy is what's the most important here. Um, and now he's got his double mortar, so now he's also safe against the rework pinks. So Ryan is ahead in so many ways. He's ahead in economy, he's ahead in lives, and uh, he's a little bit behind the defense, but I think anytime he wants, he can transfer that economy into a solid defense, especially for round 18 Moabs. So you can see now he's getting his Moab defense up. Uh, trying to get those Moab maulers. And I think, yeah, Ryan is just in a really commanding position to take this game down as well. Dark Affliction down to 61 lives. And while well, Ryan still has 147. Uh, so it looks like with this mob defense, it looks like Ryan had to sell one of his farms to get that mob defense up in time. Really interesting. And that actually equalizes the uh, economy on both sides. Ryan still, of course, with those 3 2 0 farms, still quite a bit ahead. But um, the Dark Affliction. Still only on that one farm with 2-0 and the rest of them on 1-0. So I feel like the Dark Affliction is kind of pressured to do a big rush to try kill Ryan because the longer the, the, longer the game goes, the more economy Ryan's going to have relative to the Dark Affliction. Which means that uh, he'll just get more and more hit. Okay, round 20 uh, is when you can send some big rushes. Will either si side send any rushes? Uh, okay, so uh, Dark Affliction is going for a massive uh, BFB and Mario Brush. He sold all his farms. Ryan is choosing to defend this rather than counter rush. Uh, but it looks like his defense is nowhere near enough. He sold all his farms for the defense, but no, it's not enough. And Ryan loses the game. Dark Fisher takes the game. GG.
Dark Official, what a great comeback with that round 20 rush. Uh, Ryan just did not defend that adequately at all. He was so slow to def uh, sell the farms and get a um, proper defense up. He eventually popped that Moab, but man, it was like already through to the end of the track when he defended it. So I felt like Ryan did not at all respond uh, to that uh, rush, and that might be due to his, his inexperience using farms. Um, I think maybe he was used to using ice tooling, and he's only just started recently using farms because of that rule change. And so he's not as adept with defending uh, some rushes with the farm economy. Um, whereas the Dark Official, it looks like he's played a lot more games, so he should be a lot more uh, knowledgeable about using farms. They knew that a round 20 rush is very, very hard to stop, and it certainly was. So, uh, yeah, Ryan Zhu had so many ways to defend that. He could have gone, I think he could have gone for the counter rush and just gone for like quick Moabs. But having said that, the Dark Affliction also sent BFBs and Moabs. So, once that first Moab comes out, you can't actually counter rush because um, your Moab will always be slower than your opponents, right? So you have to kind of rush with Ceramics, and I'm not too sure if Ceramics could have got through the Dark Affection's defense. So I guess uh, Ryan Zhu actually just had to defend that properly, and he couldn't defend it, uh, just being way too slow with, those, with that, selling those farms. So anyway, that was game number two. One, one all. The series is tied. Let's go to game three. We're here in game number three. Ryan Zhu has chosen Hydro Dam as the third map. Uh, I know that Hydro Dam is usually uh, quite a favor of Ryan's, although in the past, he was doing Ice Storm on this map. So now that he can't do Ice Storm, I'm really curious to see how he's going to handle Hydro Dam. Uh, uh, both these guys tied up one to one, and also at the same time, I'm obviously very, very curious to see the Dark Affliction strategy. I feel like uh, the Hydro Dam is just so far from being solved. There's so many different strategies out there, and it's just really, really interesting to see which strategies eventually come out on top. And this is what King of the Hill is great at. It pits the best players versus the best players, and now we get to see who has a superior strategy for Hydro Dam. So Ryan Zhu again starting with that Boomer in his favorite spot, whereas the Dark Affliction is showing a bomb tower on the right hand side. Um, so it looks like Ryan Zhu is going to get his Boomer up to a 0-3 and then a 1-3, very very similar to how he, done it, he did it with the Ice Stall. But I guess he just has to adjust his strategy a little bit. Uh, instead of being able to Ice Storm in round 8, he has to do some other strategies for round 8. Uh, so there, there it is, the 0-3 Boomer. And the Dark Affliction still has not shown any other towers. Okay, so the Dark Affliction going for the reasonably standard Darling Gun and Bomb Tower combination on Hydro Dam. This is basically, I would say, probably the most popular strategy on Hydro Dam right now. Uh, bomb Tower plus Darling Gun. And I'm not, you know, like Speedo even uses this strategy. So it's a very, very good strategy and uh, a lot of top players. I mean, Dark Affliction, without a doubt, is definitely a very, very top player. And uh, what does Ryan Zhu go for a farm? So, Ryan Zhu has now just completely, you know, g given up Ice Store and just changed it for farm economy in every single map. Wow. So let's just see how Ryan does uses farms on Hydro Dam. Very, very interesting. Uh, meanwhile, he's going for a pink rush on against the opponent of the Dark Affection. So it looks like even though he's going farms, he's also not afraid to go and send those aggressive balloons if he thinks that it'll cause uh, the Dark Affection to cause some, to lose some lives. Uh, but in the end, he gave up doing those picks, and now he's going back to farm economy. And now Dark Affection is showing a boomerang as his third tower. Uh, so Ryan is just continuing with the farm economy. So I'm really, really curious on what he plans to do with the farm. Usually when people go farms, they go for a big rush on round 13 or round 15, Rainbow Rush or Ceramic Rush. And I feel like that's what Ryan is probably going to do with this uh, with this farm. He's just going to get a whole bunch of money from the farm economy and uh, then sell those farms and do a big round 13 Rainbow Rush. Because the thing about farms is that they give you great, great economy early on. But, um, oh, just a bit of lag here. But towards the later rounds, they're not so good at giving economy. And now the Dark Affliction has got his uh, Darkling Gun up to a 2-0. You need that to get rid of the blacks. And uh, so Ryan, seeing him upgrade that, does not look like he wants to see any blacks against his opponent. Meanwhile, he's, he's leaking a lot of lives with this uh, black rush of the Dark Affliction. He's still leaking lives, so he probably needs uh, maybe a bit more defense up, because I, I don't know if it's good for him to leak so many lives. Uh, meanwhile... Dark Flash is getting his Boomer up to a 2-0, just for a little bit of extra support. Uh, Ryan Zhu still continue to leak lives, 
and still going with the farm economy. So he's going batshit crazy with the farms, uh, getting three farms. That, this usually means that Ryan thinks he can get uh, all three farms up to a 2-0. Now hold on a sec, okay, so I was a bit worried there for both players and they, as they didn't have their ricochets up. You really, really need your ricochets for round 8 on Hydro Dam because the Rigo Yellow Rush is just so, so powerful and basically a ricochet is the only way to stop a Rigo Yellow Rush on this map. On other maps, especially with maps with huge bends, you can use a Mortar and that works just as well. But on this map, there's, the Mortar is not so, so good and so usually the ricochet is a lot, lot better for this map. But both of them understand this and both of them got their ricochet up just in time for round 8. So both these guys are obviously very, very good at playing Hydro Dam. And there it is, you can see here, Ryan getting three 2-0 farms for Hydro Dam. Wow, that, that must be so, so much economy and much more, much more than his opponent. Look at all those bananas that uh, are coming out of that, these farms. And now Ryan gets a farm, uh, sorry, a mortar up for his camera detection. And that's also a very, very interesting place to put his mortar. He's not putting it at the end, sorry, at the start, he's putting it at the end. Uh, round 13 camos. Uh, so the Dark version is going for a huge camera rush. Let's see how good uh, Ryan's Mortar spot is. It's not that good to be honest. It, it's leaked a lot of lives. Uh, and, and actually this, this camera rush might just finish him off. Uh, Ryan's trying to get a second Mortar up. But no, that's the game. GG. Um, Ryan's Mortar spot was just not good enough to stop those camo picks. And uh, that huge uh, pink camo rush was enough to kill Ryan. And actually, I noticed just at the end there that Dark Fish actually sold all of his towers to do that pink rush. So he was going completely all in with that pink rush. Because <laughs> if you don't have any towers, you can't really defend. Uh, but it was the right call. He managed to get Ryan to lose those last 20 lives and take the game there. It's a great decision making by the Dark Affliction. Now he goes up 2-1. to one. Let's go to game 4 to see if he'll take out the series or if Ryan can come back and take win the last two games to win the last series 3-2. to two. Game number four coming up. We're here in game number four. Ryan Zoo has chosen Rally as the fourth map. So it's really interesting that uh, this series, we played the three smallest maps quickly, like instantly off the bat. Uh, both of these players actually choosing the small maps. Yeah, the Dark Vision when he lost on Kazi chose Temple, and then Ryan when he lost on Temple chose Hydro Dam. So both of them seems to really like the small maps. Uh, but now that the small maps are used up, now we have to start using these bigger maps, and the strategy uh, is completely different from the big maps, I think, compared to the small maps. In the small maps, it's all about killing your opponent, but in the big maps, it's all about going no lives lost. Uh, from my experience watching the King of the Hill so far, I really think this is sort of what you need to do to win King of the Hill. Uh, it's that, like, with these big maps like Rally, Park, Plutonium Mines, uh, it's really possible to go no lives lost, and... Uh, as long as you can cause your opponent to lose one life, that's often enough, and that's often enough to win you the game. So let's see. Uh, both of them going for bomb tower boomerang, and I am pretty confident by now, having seen every single top player in Blue's Tower Defense battles going for boomerang and bomb tower, that it really is the number one like best strategy for just period for every single map, small maps, big maps, every map, and oh. Darkerfish just lost some lives. That might that might be it, guys. That might just be the GG right there. Uh, Darkerfish are losing two lives, so that's really really huge, guys. For a big map like that, that's really really huge. Um, that could be the deciding point right just then. And now, if Ryan can uh, go no lives lost for the rest of the match, then he uh, does get an advantage. Oh, oh, this pink rush might cause Darkerfish to lose a little more lives. I see some balloons going through. Uh, yep, there it is, Dark Vision, losing even more lives. Ryan Zeus has gotcha. So Ryan's obviously very, very happy about getting Dark Vision down by six lives because now you can't just sneak one or two balloons past Ryan. You have to do a, quite a big rush to make Ryan lose your lives. And I know that if anyone's ever thought about King of the Hill as, as you know, sorry, let me just say that again. Uh, Ryan Zoo has thought more about King of the Hill than anyone else since he is the cre creator of this tournament. And I'm sure he's thought about how to go no lives lost on these big maps. I think uh, maybe Speedo. Uh, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm trying to say that a lot of other players are really, really good at uh, Balloon Talent Defense battles, but they're not quite as used to King of the Hill rules as Ryan is. So I feel like maybe Ryan is the best player in the world at playing no lives lost on these big maps because he's been thinking about 
uh, you know, that this is what you need to do to win these big maps. And uh, he's, he's just shown right here, he's going for the attacks uh, that you need to, to cause your opponent to lose some lives. And in the meantime, he's getting the necessary defense up so that he can go no lives lost. And let's see, uh, I'm pretty confident that Ryan can go completely no lives lost on this map. But let's, ha let's have a look. Uh, these, th this black rush by the Dark Affliction is trying to cause Ryan to lose some lives. But so far, no lives lost. Um, sometimes, depending on how much Ryan lags, you can get him to lose some lives with black rushes. But, uh, oh, some balloons! Might, no, no, didn't quite get through there. And in the meantime, Ryan just going for a pure green economy. So this is almost like a desperation attack now. I mean, uh, okay, now, now, uh, oh, some balloons might get through. No. Uh, so now, Dark Affliction, seeing those blacks not doing any damage to Ryan, is going back to green economy. And there it is, Ryan getting a ricochet just in time for round 8. So he's completely, completely safe against any sort of yellow rush. And the Dark Affliction also getting his ricochet up for round 8. Um, so, at the moment, uh, I would like to let you guys know that although I'm commentating this video pretty much straight after these games are played, uh, usually it takes a while between before Super John Bombo uploads them to his channel. Um, he likes to keep a like a three to four video delay, uh, not not delay, but like uh, uh, a buffer. He likes to keep a three to four video buffer. So that, that way he can consistently release these videos once or twice a week. I think that's being established as twice a week now. And so whatever you see is usually uh, one to two weeks behind. Probably more like, maybe even two to three weeks behind. Um, and that's just, you know, things take time. You know, uh, these video, these games have to be played. And then uh, I have to commentate them. And then I have to edit them. Uh, but hold on a sec. A big pink rush here by... Uh, Dark Affliction on round 12, but absolutely no damage done to Ryan. His Mortar spot is perfect. It's a perfect, perfect Mortar spot. Absolutely no camo pink's gonna get through. Um, and I didn't even see, sorry, I, sorry guys, I didn't see how the Dark Affliction uh, lost even more lives. He lost three more lives somehow. Sorry guys, I was just rambling on about King of the Hill. But um, yeah, just to let you guys know that uh, if, if you if you up, uh, updated with the King of the Hill thread, you often see these results you know, being updated, but it takes a while for these videos to come out. So that's, I just want to let you guys know that, you know, don't worry too much if you see the thread uh, say something, but the video say something else. It just means that the video is just two or three weeks behind. That's all that means. The video is two or three weeks behind. Okay, round 15, Ceramic Rush. Uh, I think Dark Fishing maybe should go for a Ceramic Rush. Uh, hard to say. It's really, really hard to get past a 4-2 Bomb Tower with Ceramics. Uh, meantime, meanwhile, he has his own 4-0 uh, Bomb Tower for the Ceramics as well. So both these guys, it's really, really what, what really interests me at the moment is that both these guys, their strategies are so, so, so similar. I don't know if it's because they've just discussed strategy before and like, they just like, uh, obviously if you discuss, discuss strategy then you very quickly sort of agree that one strategy is best and therefore you both use the same strategy. Or if actually, you know, this is just really the best strategy uh, in Blue Town Defense Battle so far. Uh, I'm not too sure. I would like to see what strategy Speedo uses for King of the Hill, uh, and I really hope that some of the noblemen that, because uh, I know Crazy Aliens is a nobleman right now, and uh, I'd like to see him play some games versus Speedo and record them so that I can commentate them and give it, let you guys see them. It'd be great to see some games of Speedo, and I think you guys want to see games of Speedo as well, because he's a really fantastic, fantastic player, and just just amazingly somehow he's just miles above everyone else. I, I don't know how, but he's just played so many more games, he has so much more experience. And his strategies are just so much more refined, you know, he just, he just has these, uh, his timings down to the T. And it's so impressive. Okay, round 18 is here. Is anybody going to see a Moab? Uh, the Dark Fisher has one Moab up for his Moab defense, a uh, Moab Mauler. And he's sending one Moab versus Ryan. This is forcing Ryan to get his Moab Maulers up. Uh, he's sending two Moabs now. and. So now Ryan is getting three Moab Maulers. Uh, some balloons might get past here. Oh my god! No, not quite! Uh, Ryan getting that second 3-0 bomb tower up to help out. It helps out a lot, actually. And now... Um, yeah, that was a great defense by Ryan. And I think that was basically it. That was the Dark Affliction's sort of... That was basically his one chance, because now he's just so far behind in money. It's going to be really, really hard for him to do a big rush. On round 20 or round 22. Um, he just doesn't have the money because he used it all up in those two Moabs. 
So I feel like uh, Dark Professor should have gone for one big rush. Maybe even like selling all of his towers. I'm not too sure. Maybe that's a bit too big. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of hard. You know, there's two ways you can go about it. You can either uh, sell all your towers and do a big, big, big rush, hoping to kill your opponent. Or you can do a, like a smaller rush like that, hoping that your opponent loses one or two lives. Or in this case, more than nine lives. And thus that puts the Dark Official in the lead. But because he still has his towers, he can keep surviving into the late game. And just win with that lives advantage. But um, that tour mode rush just wasn't enough versus Ryan's defense. And oh, uh, I actually saw a pink almost get through there. But Ryan quickly gets his second mortar up. So uh, now with the two mortars, he is definitely 100% safe versus any sort of camera rush that the Dark Official can do. Okay, this uh, natural Moab should definitely not do anything versus both guys. Both guys have very, very solid defenses up. Three uh, Moabs is usually all you need. Um, both these guys showing that the Moab Maulers and the 4-2 Bomb Towers is a great defense versus any sort of Moab combination. In fact, versus any sort of combination. Basically, the 4-2 Bomb Tower and the 2-4 Bomb Tower, or 2-3, sorry, Moab Maulers are just a great, great, great combination for any sort of balloons your opponent can send. They can't send Moabs, they can't send, they can't send Ceramics, they can't send Rainbow Rushes. Uh, this defense just stops everything. And it's, it's actually quite a cheap defense as well. It doesn't cost too much to get these six, uh, five or six towers down. And Ryan getting even more bomb towers up, getting ready to upgrade maybe to another Moab Mauler. Um, and yeah, just Ryan, I don't, I don't think he's going to show any aggression. He's just definitely going to just uh, try to win by getting to round 38. And it really up, is up to Dark Affliction to do a huge attack to win this game. Um, I'm pretty sure both these guys have ground zeros as their last tower. Um, but both of them, of course, hiding it, not showing it to us. Because, uh, you know, why do you need to show your tower to your opponent if you don't going to use it? So these, both these guys just saving their ground zero, hidden in the background. Uh, and only pulling it out if they need to. And of course, if either side does a huge uh, BFB or oh my god rush, then I think we will see a ground zero from both these guys to defend it. Um, a lot of people have been saying that Ground Zero is quite overpowered, and I agree it's definitely overpowered, but it's not... Um, th the thing is, you know, you have to think about the alternative. You have to think about what would happen if we disallow Ground Zero. And basically it ends up being a PC battle. It be ends up being that you can send these Zoma Gods, you can send these, uh, you know, Moabs and BFBs on round, maybe 25 to 30 or 35 to 30, 35, it's really, really laggy, guys. Without Ground Zero, it's really, really laggy. And it really does become a, a battle of the uh, of the computers if you don't have Ground Zero. So for that reason alone, I think it's enough to justify keeping Ground Zeroes in there. Just because we want this to be a game of skill as much as possible, and not a game of whoever has the best computer wins. Um, and secondly, I think Ryan just doesn't want to... I mean, he, I think he wants to keep the competition as, as pure as possible. And what I mean by that is that um, he wants to minimize the number of rules that are in this game. He wants to let the players use all the you know, towers and all the strategies that they have available to, to them in quick battles. And so he told me that um, he was already very, you know, in so much pain uh, banning ice stalling because he feels like it just you know, he doesn't want to ban any strategies that you can use in quick battles. But, in the end, you know, the pressure of people not wanting ice stalling and not wanting to see ice stalling, plus the fact that ice stalling created very boring games, meant that, um, in the end, Ryan made the decision to ban it. And I think that was a, a good decision, uh, because it really was quite obvious from his games versus Cerulean and the Prime One Nine that ice stalling was really, really, really hard to beat. Okay, so back into this game, guys. The Dark Affliction has so many Moab Maulers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 Moab Maulers and 3, 4, 2 Bomb Towers. Plus he has 3 Mortars. Oh my gosh. So his defense is really solid. Just so, so solid. Uh, Ryan Zoo has much, much, much less defense. But I, would, I wouldn't say his defense is any less solid. I mean, none of the balloons have gotten through. He's still on 150 lives. So if anything, I would say the Dark Affliction is over defending. But, um... Again, better to be safe than sorry. And now Ryan Zoo is just getting a bit more defense up, getting a couple more bond towers for this BFB, which is pretty hard to break. Look at it. So, so hard to break. It's like the 
like the big mama of Moabs. Obviously, the big the big papa is uh, the Zomai God. So, <laughs> uh, Zakovich just been completely safe with his three mortars. And oh, uh, this okay. So Ryan's showing showing the ground zero. Uh, this this round round thirty was really really hard because the uh, these camo picks are actually like faster than your regular camo picks. They're like maybe twice as fast as your regular camo picks. And Ryan is trying to do something with his mortar here. I'm not too sure. Okay, so Ryan has upgraded his mortar to a 2-4, and that means it's pretty much completely safe versus these camo picks, because um, the 2-4 mortar shoots just much, much faster. I think it shoots three times as fast as the regular mortar, and that means that these camo balloons are definitely not going to get through at all. And also, this 2-4 mortar means it can use a special ability to uh, pause all the balloons on the map for maybe, I think it's like 2-3 to three seconds, or maybe even 3-5 to five seconds, and that's a great ability as well. It's kind of like a mini Ground Zero. Uh, if, if Ground Zero was ever banned from this game, then I think a lot of people would be using that Mortar ability a lot to try to get, uh, basically pause the balloons for that 3 to 5 seconds. And what, what you can do is you can actually uh, you know, do the ability, then sell and then rebuy the Mortar up to 2-4 and just keep doing that forever. And you can actually uh, basically pause the balloons on the map pretty much forever, depending on how fast you can click this buy and sell. And so uh, that's kind of like a, almost like a ground zero in itself, but just much, much less damage. Oh, so the Dark Invasion going for the Zomai God Rush now. This is basically his last hurrah. Uh, Ryan Zhu is showing perfect, perfect defense this whole time. Uh, getting a perfect balance of defense and economy. So it's not just about how good your defense is, guys. It's about getting defense and economy so that you can defend now as well as later. And now this three Zomai God Rush by a Dark Inflation. Let's see if it does any damage to Ryan. I don't think it will, just because Ryan has shown his Ground Zero. And with the Ground Zero, it's going to be so, so, so hard to um, use Zomai God to cause any damage. And here, okay, so here we go. Ryan starting off with his uh, quote-unquote infinite zone, uh, Ground Zeros. Just Ground Zero, buy, sell, Ground Zero, buy, sell, Ground Zero, buy, sell. And look at this. These Zomai Gods are doing absolutely nothing. Just getting completely obliterated buy these Ground Zeros, boom, boom, boom. Ground Zero is so, so, so good in the late game, especially when you have enough money, uh, economy-wise, to support infinite Ground Zeros, it becomes really, really hard to kill your opponent. Okay, so <coughs> I think that's pretty much GG right there. Uh, Dark Confession has used up all his money, and oh, um, I did not see how that happened. Uh, I... I guess those camo balloons just got through the Dark Ambition's defense. Um, okay, so sometimes, uh, again, balloons go through and we don't get to see it on screen because there is that lag. But um, yeah, victory for Ryan Zhu in game number four, GG. That ties the series up two to two. Wow, two to two here. So now it's up to uh, the Dark Ambition to choose the last map. I guess he has a bit of advantage because he gets to choose the last map. And this is the deciding map. Uh, it could be a draw. If it is a draw, then uh, we continue on with the series, but uh, if it's not a draw and one, either side wins, then that is it. Ryan Zhu, can he protect uh, the king as fulfilling his duty as a knight, protecting the, the king from the challenges, or does the Dark Confession beat Ryan in the last set and earn the spot of Nobleman? Let's go to game 5 to find out. Game number 5, the deciding game between the Dark Affliction and Ryan Zhu. The Dark Affliction choosing Plutonium Mines as the last map. Very, very, very interesting. He's chosen another, another big, big, big map. Uh, very similar to like Rally. And uh, I think it's very, very possible that this last map might be a draw, in which case we will go on to more and more maps. Uh, there's still Yin Yang to be played, and uh, one other map, I'm not too sure, which hasn't been played in the series. And so if it is a draw here, then it will be 2-2, and we just continue on with more and more maps and become sudden death. Um, but that might not, ha not happen. Maybe one of these guys will take it out right here. Although it's very, very unlikely, I think, as both players uh, should be very good on these big maps. Uh, they should not uh, lose any lives on these big maps. So, Dark Fishing and going with the Cannon and Boomer. And Ryan Zhu also going with the Cannon and Boomer, uh, but the only difference is that they have different Boomerang placement. Uh, the cannon is exactly the same placement. So very, very interesting that uh, we'll see which boomerang spot is better. Uh, the Dark Affliction, I like his spot 
because it, uh, he puts on a last and it hooks around. And the great thing about his spot is that his boomerang is always hooking into the balloons. It hooks into the balloons, whereas Ryan is always hooking sort of away from the balloons. And usually hooking into the balloons is better. But um, I think Ryan's spot is also very good because it hits so many different lanes. And it does catch those balloons when uh, they get to the end there. But uh, I think both spots overall are pretty good. Oh, Ryan's almost lo losing a balloon there, but not quite. And both of them playing very, very safe, getting that 2 3 boomer up before round 4. And the Dark Affection going off with the Pink Rush here. Uh, I think Ryan should be fine. And yep, so Dark Affection sensing that these picks are not going to do any damage, goes straight back into blue economy balloons. Now both these guys are getting a second boomer, they're just going to be completely, completely safe. Usually you don't need the second boomerang, but just in case some picks might get passed, and a third boomerang by the Dark Affliction. So he does not want to leak any lives whatsoever. Wow, he's playing so, so, so safe. Uh, and Ryan also playing very, very safe with that additional boomer as well. So both these guys recognizing that they can't do any damage to each other, and uh, going back to blue economy balloons. So basically with the big maps, as I said before, um, all you need is to hurt your opponent for one life. And then it's, it's quite doable to uh, go the rest of the game, no lives lost, and that's how you win at King of the Hill. Um, <clears throat> and that's what's great about King of the Hill is this this lives thing, because without it, then it just, every game becomes a draw on round 38. Or we have these uh, super late game PC battles, which is also not very fun for the players or for the viewers. And oh, a little pink rush here by the, da the Dark Efficient, but it does absolutely nothing to Ryan. And oh, I didn't even realize that somehow at some time, the Dark Fish got a third 0-0 uh, Boomer up. Now both guys, these guys on round 6 going for a Black Rush. Ryan getting his Boomer up to a 2-0. Uh, whereas Dark Fish is choosing to go with more 0-0 zero, zero Boomers. And uh, oh, some of these balloons might get past Ryan's defense. Uh, so far none have got past. But here come some Black Balloons. Oh, so these Black Balloons are very, very dangerous for Ryan. There's some Balloons getting through. I see a Balloon getting through. That's it. Ryan loses so many lives. Down to 120. What the on earth? He's losing so many lives. How did he lose so many lives there? Ryan Zeus says, What the F? He just lost so many lives there. He lost like. Wow. He lost uh, one. Uh, he lost 31 lives from those black balloons. That's ridiculous. So I don't know if that was lag or if that was just. Uh, maybe that, that's just what happens when you do a black rush versus someone on Plutonium Mines. Uh, now around 8. Dark Fishing getting being very very safe with that ricochet. Uh, Ryan still has not got, got his ricochet yet. Um, I think he should get that in case uh, Dark Fishing goes for a regular yellow rush. But really, you know, even though he's sending some yellows and some blacks, he doesn't need to send any more attacking balloons. He is so 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 far in the lead that he's just he's completely set. He can just get to the uh, round 38 and win the game that way. And now, yeah, he just needs he just needs to play very very safe and make sure he doesn't leak any needle any lives. And meanwhile, he's still doing some attacks. He's doing some yellow economy balloons, but he's also sending some white balloons to attack Ryan. And, uh, you know, if, if they're not costing him any, any economy, then I don't see anything wrong with this. Oh, some more balloons might even get through. Uh, yo, that last red balloon just got getting caught by that ricochet. So no lives lost by Ryan, but he is in a world of hurt right now. I, I honestly don't see how he can come back here. Dark Fisher has shown that he knows how to play very, very safe getting three zero zero boomers up for that round six. So it looks like the Dark Fishing may be, you know, very, very practiced for King of the Hill. Uh, especially for this particular map, knowing exactly how much defense he needs for round six so that he doesn't lose any lives to his black balloons. Whereas Ryan, uh, still not quite as, uh, obviously not quite as secure with his defense. Uh, almost, uh, I would say, disappointing by Ryan. Uh, Ryan saying, the rounds stalled by itself. <coughs> uh, unhappy face. So what he's saying there is that sometimes the rounds, even though the balloons have all been killed, um, the round still hasn't, the next round still doesn't start. And that's the bit of a glitch in the game really. Uh, usually the round is supposed to start immediately after all the balloons have been killed. But Okay, so Ryan going for a camera rush here, trying to uh, hurt his opponent. Meanwhile, uh, the Dark Flash are also going for a camera rush. Uh, and Ryan does not get his uh, village up, so he's going to lose even more lives. Uh, oh my gosh. Ryan down to 89 lives. This is terrible for Ryan. And meanwhile, he's just continuing to try to go for this pink rush. 
But um, it looks like this mortar spot is just too, too good, and none of these pink balloons are getting through. And now Darkerfish with the second mortar up is going to be completely safe versus any sort of camera rush. Uh, Ryan, uh, I, I honestly don't, just don't know what he's going uh, to do here. Um, look at this, Darkerfish is getting two ricochets and a 3-0 boomer. He is so, so, so safe versus any rush that Ryan can do. Um, <clears throat> so now uh, Darkerfish are feeling safe enough to go back to economy balloons. He's going for some black economy. Uh, there's really not too much difference between black economy and pink economy. Pink economy is a little bit better, but black economy is just fine as well. And I really think Darker Fiction has taken this out, guys. I think he's going to become a nobleman. I think he's going to become the second nobleman in King of the Hill. Currently, the current uh, noble, uh, one nobleman is Crazy Aliens, defeating Anacondas. And the Darker Fiction, I think he's going to take it out here. He's going to become a second nobleman. I almost feel like saying congratulations to him already. Uh, so now he's sending ceramics. Um, I don't know if he needs to send this rush because uh, he's already so far ahead. So Ryan getting this defense up with the bomb tower. Oh, this defense might not be enough. Uh, the balloons are getting through. Ryan's losing so many lives, and that's GG. The Dark Affliction defeating Ryan, getting him down to all to zero lives from 150. Pretty unheard of on a big map like Plutonium Mines. But um, yeah, I guess it's because Ryan was just sending so much, uh, using so much of his money to sent attacking balloons to try to get Dark Affliction down in lives but whatever attack he sent it completely did not hurt Dark Affliction at all because this defense was just too too good and uh, without any money left Ryan just couldn't get that, that defense up versus those Rego Ceramics so congratulations to the Dark Affliction he wins this series 3-2 and he becomes the second nobleman in Bloons Tower Defense Battles King of the Hill history congratulations to you uh, now you can go and face Speedo for that king spot and try to take the throne from Speedo, but Speedo is definitely a very, very tough opponent. And so good luck to you. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.